Hey, good morning, Eastern Oregon, and welcome to this March 16th version of AM Live on EOA, your connection to Eastern Oregon, and we're also on Roku. Yep. How morning, TJ. How are you? Oh, yeah. How you are see, you? Why don't uh, scientists trust atoms? Why? Because they make up everything. <laughs> I found that one. <laughs> There's not very many jokes left, so I don't bust them very often. But... <laughs> oh, uh, why was... did the chicken go to the seance? Why to get to the other side? Oh, brother! <laughs> These are they're like corny dad jokes. I like them. <laughs> that was a good one, though. It I mean, was. Yeah, yeah. So. We wa I watched uh, Tanya and I watched The Last of Us, which is a. Uh, it's kind of a zombie. It's a new series that was on HBO, and you know what I mean. When HBO creates these series, is like a significant. I mean, like Game of Thrones, and I mean they do it really, really up. There's no casual. Yeah, The Last of Us is a is a video game, and that's sure. right. I, yeah, yeah, and. And so, anyhow, so then you know what it's about. So, I do, but I've never watched the show. Well, and we hadn't either, except it's been just getting a ton of buzz, and so we watched it. And it's kind of a zombie movie, only it's a bit kind of based upon, kind of like the pandemic. I mean, I'm sure that that's why they made it because, you know, there's a disease that takes over the or world and and people die from it but the zombie side of it is they don't really die they just become super spreaders and so they bite people and you know like every other show like every like other yeah, yeah yeah so it's very much a the walking dead yeah yeah that's exactly i mean it's a but the thing the, what i was trying to get to was is but in that show it's a it's a father and a a young 14 13 year old girl and they're together on this journey they don't know it's just not it's not da, it's they don't they're not related you know but he's kind of her caretaker and she always wears she always reading these stupid punny jokes she's got a, a, book. a book and so yeah it's just their whole the whole entertainment part tj of it. i am excited for march madness too but i am not excited about boise state because i don't care about boise state you don't like boise state i don't care about them no i'm pac 12 dude I'm Pac-12 guy. I don't care about Boise State. <laughs> so, yeah, and I'm and sorry. I, I'm I came so from ignorant. Southern What's California the... to Oregon. I've never had any ties to Idaho. So, yeah. So, so what? What conference is Boise? Um, in the Boise State is it? Why is why am I having a brain fart? Um, they are in the Mountain West. Okay, is that right? Yeah, Mountain West. Same conferences like San Diego State. Um, there's a bunch of teams on okay. the West, but yeah, and they had a good, decent year in basketball. But when the reality of it is, they aren't. They won't go far in the NCAA tournament. Who's who? Do you think is going to win? Huh, it's, it's, this year, it's really up up for grabs. I, I mean, the brackets are. Um, I don't even know who the number one seeds are. But not, let's look. Here, you want to do? Let's do the intro and you can kind of roll into yeah. that. All right. Here we go. Well, let's just go to local sports because, I mean, you guys can look up the NCAA number one seeds. LHS baseball is uh, number one in all the preseason polls, uh, including the coaches' poll. Um, we have a lot of really solid returners. Our pitching at, at uh, LeGrand is going to be deep returning state champions the problem is the, the we have two problems right now and i talked with head coach parker mckinley on the phone the other night um our our two biggest problems are a the, the catcher's position that's a really important position especially in high school baseball um a catcher can you know cause can can be the difference maker of a game and then the other the other thing that we're gonna have to replace is a, a lot of RBIs. Um, Devin Bell set the state record for RBIs in a season last year. He's playing at Western Oregon now, and Cole Jorgensen was right behind him. So that's just a ton of RBIs that we're gonna have to replace. I don't see us giving up a lot of runs though, which is good. 
um, because our pitching staff is super deep. But then on the flip side, we're going to have to put some runs up. You, you can't – people say defense wins championships, but the reality of it is is you have to score uh, a run to win, right? Yeah. TJ says Bam was going to win it. The number one seeds are Houston, Alabama, Purdue, and Kansas, which is crazy because, like, two of those schools aren't even like – well, yeah, I mean – Ten years ago, Kansas would be the only school right there uh, that was in even being mentioned. Seriously, yeah. so basketball's kind of changed a little bit. But March Madness is fun, man. They play basketball all day long, and it's <laughs> tournament. It's it's nice. Um, moving on to LHS softball, they're they're number three in the preseason coaches poll. They have a new coach, uh, Walt Anderson, takes over the reins from Cody Bowen. Um, and they're looking to add on to last season's uh, quarterfinal run. And they, they lost some key players. Kenzie Bowen is playing at Oregon State right now. Um, Grace Near is pitching for College of Idaho. Um, so, they, I mean, that's two key players right there. Although that softball team was pretty young. So look for, we'll look for them to, be, to compete this year. I mean, they're, they're number three for a reason. Um, EOU baseball games this weekend have been moved from here in town to Hermiston because of the weather. Imagine that. <laughs> um, it, it, we're we're going to lose a lot of games this year. They're going to have to do something, either move baseball to the fall and softball or push it back because it's not working. I mean, we're missing out on too many home games. Uh, softball hasn't been moved yet. But I anticipate that it's probably going to be moved. They already moved it back a day. So they're supposed to, supposed to play Friday and Saturday up at Peggy Anderson Field at EOU. They've moved it back to Saturday and Sunday. We'll see from here. I mean, that field is not turf. So Coach Christian and all her ladies have a lot of work to do to get that field prepared. And it means we have no moisture between now and then. Wow. Which, I mean, there's a possibility. We'll see. And... I'm sorry for my ignorance, but a softball field is totally different. It has no mound. Is that right? I mean, is there a difference yeah, in the? There's no mound. Yeah. Yeah. It's just flat. Right. So it's not like they can play though on the other turf, but they've already, they're not playing on the turf field because it's not prepared anyhow. Well, the outfield, the grass is just thrashed. It's yeah. so wet. It's so wet. And they couldn't play on a baseball field anyways. Okay. Different dimensions. Oh, is it? See, I'm sorry. That's baseball, I... baseball fields are like. 330 down the line. Softball fields are 250 feet all the way around. And oh. the bases on a baseball field are 90 feet. Softball are 60. Oh, see, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I had yeah. never even never even put that together. Not much. Yep. Uh, Mountie baseball next week. Um, head coach Kyle Treadway is going to join me. And so I had a conversation with him for like an hour. And uh, he's excited there. They're struggling right now, but, I mean, he's a brand-new coach, and hopefully he can get this thing flip around and get the bus rolling. Um, he's going to come on my show on probably Wednesday, um, depending, I think, uh, yeah, should be Wednesday, so we'll, we'll see. Next week I have a ton of interviews lined up. Head coach Nicole Christian from EOU Softball, Parker McKinley from LeGrand Baseball, and I don't know that I'll get Walt Anderson. He don't like being on camera. So he's going to be one of those ones that I'll have to that, – that's going to be a tough <laughs> And which one. coach is he? He's the softball coach at the high school. Mm. And he's also the assistant women's wrestling coach at EOU. Mm. And he's a, he's like the Matt Wolcott of <laughs> – yeah. So, yeah, that's what's going on uh, sports-wise in the Valley. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Let's take a look at let's take a look at the weather outside. Man, it was it's chilly this morning. Yeah, it's freezing. Yeah. Look how clear that is out there. Not a fan. Yeah. Let's see. Better than snowing or raining though. Yeah, yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. But it was like frosty and cold this morning. All right, here, let's look at The European day. model shows wider spread fog pockets to start out your Thursday across the southern blues, although some of that would make it up towards the northern, meaning some isolated spots of the Grand Run Valley could be dealing with that to start out your Thursday. Otherwise, that threat begins to diminish around the 8 o'clock hour with those temperatures into low to mid-20s. Otherwise, we go on to be sunny throughout the first half of the day before. Some scattered clouds move in for the second half as those highs rise into low to mid-40s. Southeasterly winds in the morning will change to the south in the afternoon. 
soon, but will remain light, not tracking gusts higher than 20 miles per hour. A seven-day forecast sponsored by Valley Insurance shows those early morning numbers for your Thursday into the mid to the upper teens, with the exception for those warmer spots out towards Pendleton in Ontario, mid to the upper 20s, that cold spot 7 and burns, afternoon highs into the low to mid 40s, with the exception for that cold spot 35 and burns, those warmer spots, upper 40s to low 50s out towards Ontario and Pendleton. We go on to be mostly clear and dry through the end of the work week, but latest update does show at least some areas picking up a dusting to an inch of snow elevations up above 3,000 feet. For your Saturday morning, we could see some isolated rain showers actually for your Sunday afternoon. Otherwise, most of you may just remain dry until we hit Monday into Tuesday. That's when I'm expecting more of that wider spread moisture could produce some light areas of snow accumulations throughout the first half of next week. Otherwise, most of what will be falling will remain into the air, but it's possible the back half of next week could slightly cool off, but not tracking anything significant at this point. That's your forecast until Monday. <laughs> We're both looking at the screen when it comes back to it. <laughs> when it like, comes back. I'm not even looking at the <laughs> Yeah, I was uh, waiting for grapple. You didn't say it. You didn't do the grapple. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be pretty dry heading in. I mean, Friday and Saturday, so maybe we will get softball games here. Who knows? It'd be nice. We haven't had one yet. The first series was moved to Hermiston against Southern. This weekend's against Bushnell. And is the weather? I guess it's just drier there because it's over. It's yeah. not into the gorge, and they have turf. And the, oh, I okay. And they don't have the wet. Yeah, they don't have. So they have much turf moisture. clear into the outfield too. Then no, no, no. They're just not. Not it's not. We don't have turf here for softball. Oh, right. Okay. We play on dirt, which is, it doesn't. It doesn't get rid of the water very well right. either. It's not a yeah. great drain system. Yeah. All righty. Um, Paul Anders was scheduled to be with us this morning, but he uh, had a, a conflict and was not able to. He had to be out of town. And we didn't, uh, in our communication, we didn't know about that, put that all together until actually this morning. So anyhow, so it's just us this morning. We're going to kind of just talk about stuff. I want to show you a little video. Yesterday, the train derailment downtown got a lot of attention. Man, I every, every agency that there was shared the news about that, the police department, Union County. I mean, partially because it, does a big impact and partially because of the hot news about train derailments right now. And so anyhow, so I, I went down there and did a little live video. I'll play here just a little bit of it. And you can kind of see what was going on. Hey, Eastern Oregon. Uh, I'm down here at uh, the corner of where Greenwood street uh, goes over the railroad or the railroad goes past Greenwood Street, and I'm here at the place where they're fixing the derailment. Let me turn this around so you can see it. So, I think this was connected to a longer train, and now, and so then, so these downtown intersections were blocked, but they're not now. You can kind of see, walk out here in the middle of the train tracks, you can kind of see how it's been derailed and so it looks like they're fixing it it's been disconnected from the other train and so then there is no there is no blockage right now anyhow um, it looked, somebody had told me, I mean, the kind of the news was, is that they were, the, the train was switching tracks there and somehow things were, didn't, didn't line up or. So. I, I read that it was human error. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. But it, you know, I mean, but the track, when the trains come through here, they're going. Slow. S really slow. So it's, yes. Yeah. So it's not a, not a huge. I was on a train that derailed. Did you? Yeah. An Amtrak train. Was it going fast when it derailed? It was going like 40. Yeah. I think is what they said, 11 cars. Huh. I was I was I, I was on one of the cars that derailed. Huh. I was I like I remember sitting there. I was like, let me think. 
10 or 11. It was right before we moved to Oregon. Mm-hmm. I was taking the Amtrak from um, San Diego to Lompoc, I believe, is where my grandpa pa was living at the time. And it derailed like an hour outside of where my grandparents lived. And my grandpa had to come pick me up. Oh. Yeah, I was a kid. I mean, I was young. I don't I don't remember all the details of it, but I definitely sat there for like five hours. <laughs> it was terrible. Do you remember how it felt? Did it or did it just come it was to a stop? Shaky. Or... Yeah. A little shaky, weird. Yeah. Not, nothing like we didn't like tip over or anything. Something. Well, and well in those, you know, I mean the the things that are dangerous are the high speed derailments because yeah. then the momentum of the train you know you have a car that goes off the track and then they just all pile up against yeah. the stopped cars so but i was you know we we had quite a bit of conversation about my my event down the, me recording down there because it's at one point i kind of walked a little bit more toward the uh, toward the derailment and one of the railroad guys told me I was on private property and I kind of made my way back and I watched it. Yeah. 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 So mm. lots of, I, I was, I guess what I noticed was that, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of families of railroaders in, in Legrand who are very defensive about, I mean, yeah. understandably they're, they're, they're family members, yeah, you know, I noticed that too. <laughs> yeah. So, which is, which is good. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. I understand. But so, and the railroads, I, I mentioned this a little bit during the thing, since the, the railroads have been a part of the infrastructure of the United States for so long, I mean, the Legrand and Steve was with us here the other day. We talked about how, I mean, Legrand used to be up on the hill. Yeah. And the reason that it moved down the center of Legrand moved to where it is was because the railroad came through. You know? I agree with the people that are saying get the railroad out of town, move it, move it out by the freeway. Yeah, it has no business being going right down through the middle of town. Yeah, it's it, it's annoying. They stop for you know, they clog up the middle of downtown for. Yeah, it's like and and I'm not anti railroaders or anti railroad or anything like that. I'm I'm pro pro things being easy yeah and having the railroad run right through the middle of town yeah it's not easy <laughs> no but it'll never happen ever i mean just because the it's so it's so much a part of the infrastructure i mean it's i Tanya it's and not I, that big of a part of our infrastructure no no it provides jobs and no it's it. it's a but i mean i tanya and i watched uh was entering and we watched a a history show the other day about the transcontinental railroad and and uh lincoln was president during that time and part of the motivation was what the railroad wherever the railroad company ran their tracks they could i mean they got paid for actually doing it but they also got the mineral rights and the land rights wherever it is that they went also and so the point is is there's just a huge amount of infrastructure history yeah. that cannot be changed we don't even need railroads in america anymore really no that's not true what? because i mean i mean if what what does a what does a railroad do that nothing else can do haul massive amounts of freight i mean if you if you did not have the railroads the amount of truck traffic that you would have on a freeway even more Oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah. Okay. That makes well, sense. and and it's funny because p- some people have people have no idea they don't put this together either. That I mean, they'll say, "Well, man, look at the amount of exhaust, or look at the amount of carbon that a train puts out." But the amount of carbon, the ratio of carbon to weight that it can carry, is way more efficient than any means out there. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you'd have to show me that. Because no, I mean it's it's I, it's a part of the thing, yeah. I, I don't I mean, know. I mean, well, I mean, think about this term. Think of it this way: so uh, a, a typical railroad car will haul a hundred ton. Okay. A, Where are you getting this information? BC? I just I just know this. I know this because when I was a kid, we would buy coal by the car, 
the and it was and that was the kind of a standard load is a hundred ton of coal. Okay. okay. So and uh and a truck, I mean a truck will weigh maybe 30, 40 ton. So I mean like a, a full size 18 wheeler running down the road. So you could have so for every train car, you'll have, you know, it carries the weight of two or three truckloads. So, hmm. so, but for, for massive stuff like grain, coal, crops, I mean, it's, it's. Yeah, it doesn't do much for us though, besides provide jobs for, for our, for this valley. No. It just no. provides jobs. Yeah. Nope. And a nuisance. <laughs> yeah. No, because but I they think, can't figure out the changeover. They used to change over out of town, which they yeah. should. I well, mean, it just makes sense. Well, and and I and I think that's part of the you know part of the aggravation, which I totally get and understand, is the town people look at the train. I mean, they look at it as an inconvenience because it's not a, an essential part of our lives. Right. It's. I mean, there are people, local people that are employed there, but yeah, that's you know. And no, no bashing on them. It has nothing yeah. to do with them. No. It has to do with they, you know that they, they always used to change over out of town. Yeah. So, but now they're ch and even people that I know that work at the railroad are frustrated with it. Yeah. It, you got cars. You got those intersections for Greenwood being blocked for 25, 30 minutes at a time. Yeah. That's ridiculous. No. That's a bit. If if, if you if you don't drive, and you live on that on the north side. Right, mm -hmm. that's a long wait when you're walking five minutes to work. No, and I, I, I couldn't agree more. I, 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 I agree more. I mean, but the the fact is, is that railroads have been along for so long that they just have trump power. I know it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's just that is the that is the way that it is, and so I mean. You should have seen, I don't know if you didn't follow the process, but the process of getting the signals changed so that when we'll, when trains come through, well, that they yeah, wouldn't they blow, their blow their whistles. Horn, yeah. I mean, that was like a 10 year process. That didn't, that, that didn't, you, the horns, once you get used to them, they don't matter. I yeah. mean, I lived, I, I grew I, up on Washington, so right, the horns right. was just nothing. But the point, the point is, is how is long that, it took. Yeah. Is, is that the, you know, the railroads have, this ability to put a tremendous got, amount of red tape out there. Yeah. It's because they got a lot of this. Yeah. Money. I suppose so. Yeah. Cash rules everything. Yeah. It does. I mean, well, and it, yeah, I, I, but I, but it is, it is, it's not, it's an unappreciated, doesn't benefit us, but I mean, you, people who just say, ah, I wish the railroad would go away. They just have, they have no clue what it is that, so when Kenny talked to you yesterday out of the truck, yeah, I didn't um, know who that was. I, I know him. Uh, d d well, I mean, I don't know him. I know him twenty years ago. Yeah, you know, he's a few years older than me. But, but, uh, it, so basically, what he's saying is those buildings that are right there, they don't own any land behind them. Well, and I, it's not possible. Well, and I didn't, I didn't really want to. No, it wasn't. Know, I really, worth it. it wasn't. It wasn't worth debating with him. No, you know. But he was, uh, he was already frustrated. You could tell. Like, yeah. He was already... But, but the, but yeah, the. I think what happens is that the railroad has power over the right of way. They have a right of way. I mean, it's just like. Yeah, but you only get a certain amount of leeway each way. I know, but but I think for the railroad, they have. I mean, 50, I have no, I, that sounds familiar. 50 feet on, on either side, side of the, uh, 50 feet on either side of the track. So, but that doesn't go all the way to the building. It probably, it, it, it would have to come pretty close. So, so if you're a building owner, I would like, I, I wish we had the, 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 the property lines because, right. you know, if you're a building owner right there, you have to have some, some land behind you. You can't just be right on the edge yeah. of your land. No, no. And what was what was confusing is see, I know the trucking company. I mean, I'm friends with Vic who operates, or at least he used to operate that trucking company right there. And I mean they park their trucks and trailers there all the time. And so I think the the it's a, a in a right of way situation and highways have right of ways and cities and utilities have right of ways. I mean through our property out in Island City there's a gas or a sewer line that comes and and it has a right of way attached with it, meaning that 
it's not wise for us to ever build a structure over that right away because if that if it needed to be serviced they would tear down the structure in right. order to dig it up okay and so so i think what the the railroad has a right away that they can choose to exercise it whenever they want mm -hmm. and clearly in the particular case yesterday they were exercising it well i think i think that that uh I mean, I, I don't think it was like mishandled, but I think the appropriate way to handle it would be um, like the police handle it. Put yeah. up, put up yellow tape. Say, you know, put put up, you know, the police. If there's a crime scene and they don't want you in it, yeah, what do they do? Yeah, it's pretty clearly marked. It's very clearly marked. Like, yeah. hey, you know, press nobody come past this yellow tape. Yeah. What instead, you know, it was wide open, uh -huh. and I get the whole argument of walking on the tracks is not very smart. It's not. I mean, you. you you know that, like uh, the, that track was probably still live. Right? Yeah, and there was probably still trains coming. But the, we, you know, there is a arm that comes down when those well, trains are and, within. Yeah, and anybody who watches the film noticed that I turned the camera both around. Ways. Yeah. I look, yeah, because I mean, clearly cars go across there. Yeah, they go across live tracks all the time. All the time. Yeah, and so you, you know, so but uh, it just. At you know, I think people kind of blew it out of water. I didn't think he was overly rude. I, I mean, I think it was just one of those situations where you know he has a job to do, and part of that job is making sure that people don't get in the way. And and you you wanted to get close enough to get some action, and he yeah. just well, and my motivation, I wasn't going to do a thing, frankly. I did, I didn't care. I mean, when it was a when I heard about a derailment downtown. And I knew how slow traffic goes. It's like oh, a train's off the track or a car's off the track. That's not a big deal. And but you know, there was a lot of social media buzz about it. People, and there were genuinely people. And after after I did that, there were people that commented, "Oh man, I was worried. Thank you so much for." So, and I, that's what I think is kind of funny is is you know sometimes however that happened those workers were inconvenienced they might have even been embarrassed if it was if if it was human cause i heard in some it manner. from a very yeah. very good source so so whatever cause. it might be you know and so and nobody wants their mistakes to be flashed out all over everywhere on the same hand it's to their benefit to know that this is really not a big deal yeah. I mean, it's one thing for somebody to say, yeah, nobody's in danger, but we all know that corporations say nobody's in danger all the time and then catastrophic things happen down the line, you know? Yeah. And so people see, people believe what they see, Yeah, you know? And well, so, and it wouldn't have, the, the video wouldn't have been a big deal unless people, I mean, people just made comments, the comments are what. People were telling each other to f off on there and all kinds of stuff. I'm just like, <laughs> really, like, like, really, be nice to each other. Yeah, like you're gonna, you're gonna cuss somebody out over a video. Like, yeah. get out of here. Let's, like, really. But Ooh. I think, but I think you know, you know, and you and I and Steve talked about that on on Tuesday. Is is that our social media has kind of changed our culture? Yeah, to where we would say things to somebody online that we would never say to their face. Yeah, I try to practice the opposite of that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say something to somebody online that I wouldn't say to them in real yeah. life. Because it just, it, it, it's, I don't know. I, I don't know how people, like, like where they justify that. Like, what, like, it was two people doing their job, right? Okay, your job, one of your jobs is to present media, to present news. His job is to make sure the safe the scene's safe. There is no ill feelings from no. either one of you no. leaving and, that situation. Right. And the situation it 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 happened exactly. The only the ill way. feelings that ended up were the people on yeah. here. It on happened, the, yeah. It happened it exactly what needed to happen happened. It did. And yep. and and nobody was mad at each other. Yeah. You weren't mad at him, he wasn't mad at you. You both understood and you moved on. Well, and and you and I know, I can't tell you the number of times that I've recorded a fire or some kind of an incident or whatever it might be. And the first interaction that I have with someone is like, you know, from the fire department or from whatever is, this is who I am. Can I proceed? Can I not, you know? And so it was, it yeah. was exactly the way that it should have happened. 
And it wasn't obvious where, I mean, I, in my head, I had no idea where the right of way. And I think that generally, you know, maybe two or three or percent of the population knows that the railroad has 50 feet on either of side course, of the, the track. family members of people that work there and of course people they that, that yeah, have worked there. Right. Yeah. But just your average Joe. No. no. And, and I guess that's part of, you know, yeah, it, I don't have to get into it, but the, the point is, is that I got educated Yeah, and I, I went back. So. Oh, so, and then the only people who got their feelings hurt are people on Facebook. <laughs> so, so, so it's ridiculous. Yeah, it really is. So, so anyhow, what do we live in, unfortunately, folks? Uh, so we have a cooking show that's coming out probably this evening. That's kind of the plan. I mean, I think. I, yeah. I hope. Yeah. I, I so, imagine. yeah. So watch for it to come out this evening. It's going to be very cool. Uh, we're looking for a sponsor for that show, too, if you know a business that wants to do that and be involved in that. Yeah, the first uh recipe is not your mama's meatballs yeah russ and, and i make some yeah. meatballs. and the meaning of that is they're his mama's yeah. meatballs. these aren't your mama's meatballs they're my mama's meatballs yeah. which i think was kind of a that was kind of a clever title yep so yeah well anything else rolling along out there no, i don't think so all right what do you want to get us out of here let's do it on this day March 16th, 44 B.C. 44 B.C. Yeah. Okay. Julius Caesar was stabbed to death by Brutus. Oh, wow. Cassius and several other Roman senators on the Ides of March in Rome. You know, somewhere in my mind, I thought, but I mean, that was, it was written about by Shakespeare, though, right? I mean, but I didn't know that that actually happened. 44 B.C. Okay. 1913, first U.S. presidential press conference held by Woodrow Wilson. 1913. 1985, the first internet domain name, Symbolics.com, is registered. First internet domain name, Symbolics.com. Symbolics. What, yeah. what year? What year? 1985. Huh. Yeah. 1991, four officers of the Los Angeles Police Department are charged with excessive force over the Rodney King beating. Wow. 1991 on this day. That's it. Has it really been that long? <laughs> that's 32 years ago. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? My gosh. 2018, on this day, toy chain Toys R Us announces it'll close all its stores after filing for bankruptcy. Man, I love Toys R Us, too, man. That place was awesome. It was a good store. Yeah. Like, what? I wonder what happened there. Yeah. The internet killed it. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm yeah, it's absolutely. Video killed the radio star. The yeah. internet killed the toy star. Yeah. Had to have. I mean, that's the only explanation for it. Yep. And then on this day in 2020, the U.S. Federal Reserve slashed the interest rates to near zero to support the economy, which is what we've talked a lot with Remax about, is that dip in interest rates, and now they're kind of coming back up. Um, and then the other thing with the, you know, talking about that, the, the Walmarts in Portland are all closing. You know that, right? Yeah, I heard and that. I heard a good idea. I don't remember who said it. Uh, why don't they just make it where it's pickup only? Because their problem is people are going and ripping them off. Yeah. Why don't they just lock those damn places up and make it pickup only? And and somebody brings you your stuff out to your car like a lot of people. My mom doesn't even go in a grocery store no, anymore. No, no. Yeah. Why don't they I just don't, do that rather than close? I don't know. I don't know. But it. We might see that. I mean, have you seen... I'm sure you have. You've seen the videos of people just walking, of course, just walking out the front door with carts stuff. full of stuff. Yeah, it is. It's the most bizarre thing ever. But I mean, yeah. Why not? I mean, I, I would imagine it's going to move to that eventually completely. Yeah. One day, like all, all stores are going to just be, you get here, hit a couple buttons, go down there, pick it up. Well, I watched a video the other day of a guy who was, had gone into an Amazon store for the very first time. And you couldn't even get in the door without having an Amazon account because what it does, it somehow it either the cart or whatever. Yeah, it tracks all your stuff. Yeah, that I you mean, grab. if you walk out the door with you're it, charged. you're charged. Yeah, I, I, I saw that. Yeah. Um, the number one movie in America on this day in 1983, Dustin Hoffman. What movie is it? Dustin Hoffman. 83. 
Tootsie. Tootsie. Yeah. That was a good movie. I never seen it. I mean, it's a yeah. little before my time. Quote yeah. of the day. Les Paul, don't say you can't until you prove you can't. Don't say you can't until you prove you can't. Mm. That's it. Short show today. Look for a lot of good interviews next week. I mean, I'm bringing in all the spring sports. Spring sports is going to start pounding. Baseball starts on the 21st. We play an Idaho team. Softball starts right then on the 21st as well. EOU softball and baseball are rolling. Um, yeah, spring sports are – I'm going to have something to talk about soon. The, the, this time of year kills me. Like, it's not as bad between fall and winter Uh huh. because there's kind of, there's a little bit more of a crossover. Right. But this the, this time of year, because of the weather, there, it's always like kind of a – there's always that little gap. And right. And this is the time of year where I just kind of, ah, I need some <laughs> – I think, oh, somebody made a comment. Let's see what they said. They could plant employees by doors to check receipts like Costco. Yeah, Ginger, but the reality of that is, is it, you know, if you're going to use those employees, you may as well use those employees to just pick the stuff up and put the stuff in a bag and walk it out to the car. And then you don't even have to have Yahoo's in there at all, right? Yeah. You know what's funny is we, I mean, talking about Walmart, we do we do the pickups. We order our groceries online and pick it up all the time. They're they're not going to use. I mean, Walmart's stopping using bags altogether. You, it's not even it's not even going to be a choice in the right. future. Well, a lot of people's argument to the whole picking up grocery things is I don't I don't want them picking my meat or my produce, and I get that. Yeah, I, mean, I get that. But at the same time, like maybe it'll be a live interactive thing. Yeah, like the. The person just walks through the store and hey, what do you want here? Yeah, vrint, vrint, you know what I yeah. mean. Like it, it, it they, they're, they're gonna stop letting people in stores because people are so, so like it's crazy. Even here, even in Safeway here, people walking in and grabbing stuff. Safeway, you know, my brother-in-law, you know, uh, Hobby Habit, yeah, one of my sponsors. Um, he got ripped off. He's been ripped off three times since he he's been the owner. Well, the last time. Um, they got the guy on camera. They know who who he was, right? Uh huh. Well, some one of his friends says, "Hey, the guy who ripped you off is in Safeway right now." So Joe goes to Safeway, you know, because the police haven't right. done anything yet. Joe goes to Safeway, and they put the the guy's stuffing stuff in his jacket at Safeway, <laughs> and Joe Joe tells the you know they they go to the employee employee's like, "We can't do anything. We can't even call the cops." You can call the cops. So Joe called the cop. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we can't call the cops if somebody's robbing us, stealing That's, from us. Yeah. That's freaking ridiculous. Yeah. And we see a lot of it here because we have a lot of drugs. We have a lot of addicts. Yeah. And, and you know, like when when you're when you're fiending for a hit of heroin or you know, yeah, opiates or any any type of drug, really, you know, people pretty much stop at nothing to to uh, get that, and that's that's where. You know, well, that's why his window's been broken twice at Hobby Habit and why people will walk in right in the middle of the day when there's 12 people in there and still three RC helicopters. It's crazy. <laughs> like, it's going to come to the point where people s- start taking the law into their own hands. Absolutely. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to get it's gonna get ugly, BC. Well, I mean, I, I can tell you, I don't, I wouldn't tolerate it. No. I mean, no. a business, you can't. I mean, when you're, when a business owner, especially a retail owner, you're working on such a small margin of profit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and his insurance didn't even cover those helicopters either. That's what you're talking about. The small margin. It wasn't enough in value. Had So it was $900 worth of helicopters. Right. It wasn't enough value for the insurance to deem it worthy of cover. Right. Okay. So he's just out that nine hundred dollars. Yep, not e- eating it one hundred percent. Right, and yep. eventually people are gonna be like, "Man, I'm done with that." No, so. no, it's like it's like the guy walked up <clears throat> and put a gun in Joe's face and said, "Give me nine hundred dollars," and walked away. I mean, it is. I'd rather they did that than than steal the helicopter. Right, right. But the point <laughs> is, is he's just stealing. He's stealing money. He's taking money directly out of Joe's pocket. Yeah, and you know, it's BS. Yeah, it really is. It's it's out of control. It's happening everywhere, all small. And eventually, what people are going to do, they're either going to close their doors or they're going to take it into their own hands. And yeah, it's going to get. I mean, I've had that conversation with cops too. Like, 
hey, don't you guys worry that, like, you know, someday people are going to start taking this? And they're like, yeah, it's going to happen. Like, it's because yeah. it, it, it's, their hands are tied on a lot of things, too. Yeah. It's crazy. All righty. Yep. Thanks, Eastern Oregon, for tuning in. Uh, Tuesday. Yep. See you Tuesday. See you Tuesday. <laughs>